and we're about to do some casual game and dad blasting in Last Epoch. The Werebear Druid is not retired, per se, but uh, once I did get this new computer this week, I decided that, ah, I'll play, try out some Last Epoch, and maybe there's a better build I can play, a more enjoyable one, and I decided on Torment Warlock. And man, has it been fun. What a difference. Talk about imbalance. Finally unpacked the mouse and the keyboard. The nice comp. I've, I'm impressed with the Red Dragon keyboard so far, I have to say. And the mouse, first of all, way more ergonomic in design than the Razer one I had before, which was way too small for my hand. But um, it's also got a bit of weight to it, which I really like. Oh, wicked, we're like close in level two, 76, 72. I knew this would work out. That's why I was trying to bust my ass to get to uh, 70. Hey, wicked, Jamstrong. Thanks for the sub, buddy. I really appreciate that, man. Wicked, Jam, you play this game too? What character do you play? Or what build are you using lately? Well, Jam, tell me at least that Necros can play minion builds in this game, which is like their whole class fantasy, unlike <laughs> some other games out there where Necros don't use any minions. Yes, here we go. Warlock. Throwing these fissures on the ground that are like spitting out all kinds of damage over time, and you just basically run through this map and let the enemies lay in your wake. And when you want a big blast, you throw down some haunting spirits and go into Profane Veil. I love the playstyle. It's so much stronger than my first character. I'm really glad I gave the campaign a second chance too, because it was way better when you have an alt that's twinked out in legendary gear and you get to skip some of the campaign with the dungeons. That was um, a much more enjoyable campaign experience. We're working into the Lich Tree here and the mana regen. That was a problem with this build. Thanks all for tuning in. Thanks, Jam, for the sub. Really appreciate that, man. And uh, thanks for coming by and hanging out. I am... Axicus, the casual gaming dad, and uh, that's the perspective that we kind of share and hang out about. At some point in the stream, it'll happen. I don't have it scheduled or anything, but we'll usually break into some dad advice and uh, also some safety tips for gaming to, you know, prevent repetitive strain injuries and stuff like that. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll get to that when we do. All right. Experience notes. Let's go. Oh, man. Empowered Monoliths level 90. Ne never mind 90. Like 98 and 99. Ooh, those hurt. I think what the other problem was with that previous build, the Werebear Druid, was I just couldn't push the corruption high enough, fast enough. And that really exacerbated the length of time that that was all taking, but. But then again, I think it's a, uh, a game design choice, too, because I've seen a clip of the main dev talking about how he doesn't think it's long enough between 98 and 99. I was shocked. I almost dropped my phone when I saw that clip. I was like a week on level 98 to 100. <laughs> Got the strict loot filter on. Thanks to Rax for putting out that loot filter for everyone. I customized this one for an endgame. I'm not really picking up and dealing with most loot unless it filters through in red and caps locks, which means it's going to be like a tier six or seven affix that I'm looking for. We're blasting, buddy. We're blasting. Feels good. All right. Just tune in. We're blasting with our buddies. The day is done, the chaos of everyday life is dissipating, we're insulated by nothing but the sounds coming out of our headphones, and the sweet, 
sweet sounds of a trumpet warlock blasting through monoliths. So we got Slicer in the party now. Blasting. That XP bar move in Slice. Hey, there we go, buddy. I'm modeling it down. Now we gotta stretch it out. Yeah, can we go get some prophecies? I think that would be super helpful for me. I'm pretty much empty on the prophecies, and we are doing Fall of the Empire. Maybe we can find some Fall of the Empire prophecies. Okay, we got giant scorpions and monoliths. That'll that'll help. Death of Exiled Mage, seven unique rings. I'll be taking that. Void Horrors monoliths, those are in those beacons for sure. I'll just do some finger band resistance training while you're on the way. So nice to just run through a map constantly moving and everything just dying behind you. I see, I see how this game is actually played now. Well, I know one thing, the experience keeps ticking. There's level 74. These fissures on the ground are just nuts. And they release spirits, and at one time they were releasing chaos bolts. It was chthonic fissure. That is like, gotta be one of the worst words I've ever heard to say. Other than like some words in Dutch or something, but chthonic, chthonic fissure. Wicked skill. Horrible to say. Absolutely horrible. Ooh, nice prophecy. I guess from Deaths of Exiled Males. Males. Deaths of Exiled Males has resulted in a shit ton of unique rings dropping for me. That's cool. And a bunch with LP there. And a good time for some dad advice on stream, which is a normal segment on the streams if you've seen the last few, you know that it always results in dad advice. And this, this one's off the cuff. Partying up. Boys, let's party up in video games and real life too. It always helps to have a buddy to give you a hand when you're doing shit. I'll give you an example. We have this spot under our stairs in the house. And ever since we moved into this house, my daughter's been asking me, I want to make that place under the stairs into uh, a clubhouse. And I said, that's an amazing idea. The entire basement had to be finished as well, so I did do that over an extended period of time. Then, unfortunately, the spot under the stairs became a storage area for all of the leftover construction materials that I was to later use to finish this little space under the stairs. And it sat like that for, well, months, and let's just say way too long. But it finally took me partying up. Partying up with one of my uh, best buddies in real life. I called him up and I said, dude, do you mind coming over and helping me with something? And normally I hate reaching out and asking for any kind of help, but he came by, we lugged all of these construction materials out and up to my garage, and uh, he was more than happy to do that, man. And I, I think that applies to a lot of us and our friends, is like, it feels great to be useful. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, don't ever hesitate to party up, to reach out, and, and he said as much, you know, we were talking about games, and we were, um, just shooting the breeze, and he said, man, thanks for calling me, I'm happy to help with any of that along the way, and you know, like, I was sitting there crippled for a while, with all that stuff under the stairs, not wanting to do it, and all it took was a call to party up, so... Boys, just like we party up with our squads and our games, 
Party up in real life too with your buddies and uh, don't ever hesitate to ask for help because it, it goes a long way to help feel useful to your friends. <laughs> 